all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. Let's examine problem 82A, a production budget. So again, I read the title of the budget and I think, what are they asking me to do? Before I even like get into it, I'm just thinking, what will a production budget be asking me to do? And, you know, I've taught this course for a while, so I already know, but you know, I think you can intuitively figure out, we're gonna have to be computing how many units that we're going to be producing each month or each quarter, each year, each period. We wanna figure out, okay, how much stuff are we planning to produce? So let's read the question and see if we can piece our way through it. The question says, Danny Company shows the following estimates for unit sales for the first quarter of its upcoming fiscal year. And there's units sold. So you also notice that so many of our budgets start by figuring out how many units we're gonna sell. If we know how many units we're gonna sell, we can figure out how many units we need to make, right? How many units we need to produce, and that's what this budget is all about. The company requires finished goods inventory on hand equal to 20% of the next month's expected sales. The company expects to begin January with 600 units in inventory. The expected unit sales uh, for April are 5,000. Okay, so a lot of information. Let's begin with the title and then we'll figure this one out. So the name of the company is Danny Company. It's my dad's name. Uh, the name of the financial statement we're preparing is a production budget, or I guess it's not a financial statement, it's a budget. And this isn't for a year, it's for the quarter ended March 31st. Okay, so we've got uh, January, February, March, and the quarter. As our headings here. Um, and now we've got to figure out, okay, we want to know how much stuff we need to produce. So a good starting point is just with this unit sold. Because, of course, if I want to sell 3,000 units in January, I better make at least 3,000 units in January, right? If I want to sell 3,000 units, that's a good place to start. So uh, 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 expected sales, I guess, is what I'll call that. Or units sold. You know, I could just use the same title expected sales i'm expecting to sell 3,500 and 4,500 so 3,000 in january 3,500 in february 4,000 in march or was it 4,000 no it's 4,500 you add those together and you get 11,000 for the quarter okay now actually let's hone in on january so i'm expecting to sell 3,000 but that's not all I actually have to have extra units left over. It says this little paragraph here, the company requires finished goods inventory on hand equal to 20% of the following month's expected sales. So in January, I'm not just going to make, you know, 3000 units and say, okay, that's it. And then February, when I start, I have nothing ready, right? Of course, if you're planning to sell 3000 in January, you'll probably want to have a few left over for next month, right? You don't want to start February with your cupboard's completely bare. So it's saying, look, whatever I do in February, I wanna have 20% of that ready to go when I begin the month. So what's 20% of February sales? Well, 3,500 times 20%. Oh my goodness, my writing is, is just hit an all time low and that, that that's saying something. Uh, 3,500 times 20% is 700 by my math. So I don't only want the 3000 I'm going to make uh, use in January. I also want to have 700 extra left over to be ready for February. So we're going to add this. We're going to call this the desired ending inventory. And I'm short on space. Desired end inv. I should have moved everything over to the right a little bit. Hey, I'm on a computer. Maybe I can do that. Look at this. 
this great idea I just had. And then let's move this one to the left. That work? Yeah, that's gonna work. Okay, so I, I don't have to abbreviate like a uh, like I was going to. The desired ending inventory. There we go. Okay, so what was our desired ending inventory for January? We thought, hey, we should end up with 700 units to be able to serve February, right? 20% of the next month's sales. So in total then, I need 3,700 units, right? I need uh, 3,000 to sell in January and then 700 extra to be ready for February. We call that our total production needs. That's what we need. We need 3,700. Now, mitigating this fact is the fact that it says the company expects to begin January with 600 units in inventory. So mitigating this production need is the fact that I already have 600 units in inventory. So we add desired ending inventory. We deduct our beginning inventory. And our beginning inventory here was 600. So 3,700 minus 600 is 3,100. This is our required production. And this is, you'll notice no dollar signs on here, right? None of this is in dollars, this is all units. So let's read this column. Because if you understand this column, you understand production budgets. If you don't understand this column, then you don't understand production budgets. So let's try to make sure we all understand this column. Expected sales are 3,000. We're planning to sell 3,000 units. So that means we need 3,000 units to sell. Not only do I need 3,000 units to sell, I also need 700 extra units to be ready for the next month because we want to have 20% ready to go for the next month. So I need 700 units ready to go for next month. So to in total, I need 3,700 units. I need the 3,000 I'm going to sell plus the 700 for next month. I've already got 600 units ready to go. So how many do I need to make this month? I need 3,100 units. I need to make 3,100 units this month. Um, okay, let's do February and see, uh, really make sure we've driven this home. So in February, our expected sales are 3,500. Our desired ending inventory, well, it's gonna be 20% of March. So March is, is 4,500, 20% of that is 900. 3,500 plus 900 is 4,400. Our beginning inventory in February, what is that? Well, it's the same as our ending inventory for January. So we deduct 700, just our ending inventory for January. 4,400 less 700 is 3,700 units. That's how many units I need to make in February. Let's move on to March. March, our desired inventory is 20% of the following month, not the quarter. I won't do 20% of 11 grand. It's going to be 20% of whatever I make in April. Now, or my expected sales in April. My expected sales in April, oh, there they are, they're given. It has to be given to you some way. They might use a different phrase. They might not say expected sales for April. They just might say desired ending inventory for March. They're going to give you this number in some way in a production budget problem, but this is how I've chosen to write it. The expected unit sales for April are five grand. Well, we know 20% of that needs to be ready to go in March. So 20% of 5,000 is 1,000, just 0 0.2 times 5,000. 4,500 plus 1,000 is 5,500. We deduct our beginning inventory, which is just our ending inventory for February. That's what we began March with. And that is 900, not dollars, but units. 5,500 minus 900 is uh, 4,600, 4,600. Okay, now our final column the, for the quarter column, our expected sales for the column quarter, 3,000, 3,500, and 4,500 all add up to 11,000. Our desired ending inventory for the quarter. This is a classic place where students make mistakes. They add across. That is not correct. How many units do we want to end the quarter with? Well, what is the end of the quarter? The end of the quarter is March 31st. We're doing this for the quarter ended March 31st. So how many units do I need in desired ending inventory on March 31st? Well, it's the same thing I need at the end of March, right? I need a thousand units at the end of March. I've just said my desired ending inventory for March is a thousand. Well, the end of March is the end of the quarter. So I need a thousand units at the end of the quarter. 
11,000 plus 1,000 is 12,000. Again, summing up here, you are not doing it right. Uh, desired beginning inventory. Again, I don't add this up. I say, well, what's the beginning of the quarter? The beginning of the quarter is January the 1st, right? That's the first day of this quarter, January, February, March quarter. Uh, so the first day of the quarter is January 1st. What is the desired inventory at the beginning of this quarter? Well, I look over here and I say, okay, well, in January, I wanted to have 600 units, right? That was my beginning inventory in January. So let's deduct 600 units because that's what I begin the quarter with. 12,000 minus 600 is uh, 11,400. Now the math still should work vertically and horizontally, and I believe it does here. If I add across 6,000, yeah, I get 11,400, and of course it worked going down. That's the way I did the math in the first place. So just keep in mind, our ending inventory uh, for March or for the last month of the quarter, if it's a, you're doing a quarterly one for the year, the last quarter of the year is going to match here. Our beginning inventory matches. So uh, those are th the most common mistakes I find in these production problems. Okay, we're done the report. I, I kind of want to talk about its purpose and where it fits into the greater puzzle of budgets. So we've said, look, we cannot prepare a production budget without a sales budget, right? Unless I know what I'm expecting to sell, I can't really plan on what I'm going to produce. So a production budget needs a sales budget. But a production budget also drives a bunch of other budgets. We'll see when we move into problem 8.3, our production budget drives our materials purchases budget. So if Danny Company makes uh, cupcakes, right? And I know I, I need to make 3,100 cupcakes in January. That's going to tell me when I need to order flour and when I need to order eggs, when I need to purchase my materials. So materials purchases get driven by production. What else gets driven by production? Well, when we bring in employees, direct labor, right? Our, our labor workforce, how many employees do I need to make 3,100 cupcakes compared to 4,600 cupcakes? Am I gonna have to hire an employee in March? Maybe. Are my employees gonna be working more time in March? Almost definitely. So this is something a company needs to be ready for. Because of course, when we hire people that, to make more stuff, it costs us money and we've got a plan for that. So the production budget, driven by the sales budget, the production budget will drive uh, materials purchases, it will drive labor budgets, and it will drive cash spending as well. All the things, you know, spending on labor, spending on materials purchases, all sorts of things. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you're understanding where it fits in the puzzle. And I hope you stay tuned for our next video.